The Dapper Dividends Podcast is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Hey, it's not a live studio audience, but you're my studio audience, and I love you. You're in your cars, you're in your bathtub, you're doing whatever you have to do to keep yourself clean and out of trouble. What's up? What's going on? For those of you watching on Spotify and YouTube, thank you for tuning in to the number 167th podcast episode of the Dapper Dividends Podcast is what we're talking to you on. Did you guys watch the Super Bowl? I watched the Super Bowl. We watched it for free. We're cable cut or cord cutters, not cable cutters. We're cord cutters. We're saving money so we can do things like buy trips to Ireland, which I think I told you we're booked until next, not until we are going in the end of May, early June, hopefully going to see my friend, Engineer My Freedom, Derek, out there in the Waterford parts of Ireland, where I've never been before. I've never been before to Ireland, and I'm looking forward to it. I think there's a little bit of Scottish mixed in there. Yeah, this is not the normal thing uh, that we do around here, but going to get uh, exciting, a new position. I just started a brand new position, and I guarantee... Probably 99% of you have never heard of this position. I sold a position that I held for, I think, a week. No, just under a week. And I'm out of it. We're going to talk about that. And we're going to do a little bit of news before we jump into the main discussion. And it's really interesting. One thing real quick. If you follow me on Twitter, and I also put this out in the YouTube community, I was up working up in Wisconsin, Franklinsville, Wisconsin, actually, which will tie in nicely to the quick point I want to make after this point. We're all about points here. I got more points than a needle factory. Well, what I was doing up there is I stopped on my way to this wonderful grocery store called Woodman's. I love their liquor department. The liquor section at Woodman's in Wisconsin is fantastic. There's a lot of things we can't get back here in, I was going to say the States, but I mean in Illinois where I'm at. The land of Lincoln, as they call it. You know, I always think when I'm driving back into Illinois from Wisconsin, it's see that sign, welcome to Illinois, the land of Lincoln, pay a toll. And then there's a toll booth that you got to pay. We have a lot of toll booths here and the roads are for crap, but that's a different topic for a different day. And while I was in Woodman's, I happened to be walking by one of their scratch-off and lottery machines. And I, I just had to do it. The lottery is a tax on hope. And I called it, this is a tax on hope machine. And that's what it is, in my opinion. The odds are you're not going to win a life-changing amount of money. People do. And that's why they put those people with the big giant checks on TV and on the billboard. So you will want to play. Why? Because they're creating tension in your brain. They want you to have desire and envy for that person. And they want you to want that. So just play the lottery. What? 10 bucks, 20 bucks. Don't do it. Don't do it. Invest your money. But if you must, must, must play the lottery, treat it like it is just entertainment. Like if you were going to the movies, it's entertainment. You may win money, but do not play it. Put it this way. If you're playing the lottery, trying to win money to pay for things, you shouldn't be playing the lottery. So anyway, really quick for the news, uh, Franklinsville, Wisconsin, I'm reading the longest ass book I've ever read. Uh, it's uh, called The First American by a Brands, I think was his name. I should have written it down, but you can see how fancy and advanced we are here. Ben Franklin was a really interesting character. And the more I learn about the man, you know, we, we kind of have this deification here of the founding fathers here in the United States, but dude, they were all just fallible human beings. They were, they had, you know what, what is that saying? Um, Every man is like the moon. They have a dark side that they don't show to the world. Well, we got to see some of ben, Benny Franklin's dark sides there and kids out of wedlocks trying to hook up with women half his age while he's married. Not to denigrate him. I mean, the, the man was a genius. But the point I'm making is nobody's a saint. Nobody's perfect. And I'm not perfect. You might be perfect because I can tell. 
<laughs> just by the way you're listening to me, <clears throat> people are like, dude, this guy's insane. That's the whole point, everybody. And anyway, the point being is where I'm at in the book is Ben Franklin, uh, because he was in the legislature, not the legislature, they didn't make the law, but, um, oh, I forgot the word, not parliament. Anyway, he was elected to the House of Commons, whatever it was, I forget. I'm a human fallible being, like we talked about. And he went over as part of a delegation to uh, to England, which is where he was from. His family was from England. And he wanted to stay there. He thought about staying there. He was a proud Briton, as he said. And he even self-labeled himself. He self-labeled himself a uh, British imperialist. And this was in the early 1760s. Obviously, 1776, we know what happened. And... It's just really interesting to see how somebody can evolve. He came back to the United States because he wanted to help further establish the British Empire and see the British Empire slowly take over the entire continent that we're on here. So what a of evolution. I'm evolving a little bit as an investor, <clears throat> and it's to be with companies I understand. So... With that being said, let's get into a bit of the news for you. News you can use, everybody. News you can use with the clues. You won't get the blues with this dividend news. Hey, that's, that's pretty good. I'm proud of myself. Hey, hooray. Anyway, okay, so we'll just do the dividend hikes here. FIS, Fizz. I've never heard of them, honestly. I probably should have. They're a data processing company. They raised their dividend 11%, current yield of 3.1%, and they've never missed a payment since 2003. Uh, let's see here. There was a note about Stanley Black & Decker. They got downgraded by Simply Safe Dividends, which is where I'm reading this news to you from. Exelon, they are the parent company of ComEd here, ticker, EXC raised their dividend 6.7%. And that's their first increase since they divested their nuclear plants, 3.39% yield. TC Energy, ticker TRP, oil and gas company from Canada, 3.3% increase, 6.58% current dividend yield. PSEG, multi-utility company in New Jersey, New Jersey, 3.69% current yield. They raised that dividend 5.6%, which is their 19th increase in the last 20 years. Way to go, PSEG. Hercules, shout out to my guy, Darth Dividend. Uh, I know he, at one point, probably still does invest in Hercules Asset Management and Custody Bank. They're similar to uh, the BDCs uh, that I invest in, which is uh, Aries Capital, ticker ARCC, and also Main Street Capital. I got a lot of tickers rolling around this noggin, everybody. They raised their dividend 8.3%. They have a yield of 10.34%. Oh, note on MPW, they got downgraded. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Edwin Dorsey. He runs the Bear Cave Report. I think it's the Bear Cave Report. I should get better writing this stuff down. But he relayed information that there's some shenanigans going on behind the scenes. Could be fraud at MPW. So look into that. Realty income bumped their dividend 2.4%. Like, oh, another dividend hike for realty income. That's their 119th since 1994. That current yield is 4.61%. Way to go. Realty income. I love them. The semiconductor company, ADI, their logo looks like the YouTube logo. They raised their dividend 13%, which is their 20th annual increase, only a 1.77% yield. Uh, HCSG, they are a diversified support service. They suspended their dividend to prioritize share repurchases. Next, moving it along to CSX, the railroad company, Raise their dividend 10%, which is their 19th straight year. A little itty bitty tiny dividend of 1.41%. Ah, I didn't say it. Promise my guy I wouldn't. Uh, Newmont got a borderline safe to unsafe downgrade by Simply Safe. 
and they are the world's largest gold producer. I used to own Barrett Gold once upon a time. We're getting there, everybody. A lot of stuff coming down the pike. Sherwin Williams, ticker SHW. Tiny little microscope. I needed a I need one of Ben Franklin's microscopes to see this dividend increase of point. 0.8%, 1.07% current yield, Sherwin-Williams. That's their 45th straight year. They're going to be a dividend king. Cisco, company I sold out of because I'm trying to consolidate and remove some of my dividend overlap. Too bad I didn't wait because they were up about 3 bucks today. Their dividend they raised 2.6%, which is the 12th consecutive year, 3.06%. Cisco, in a nutshell, what they do is they make equipment so computers can talk to one another. They're like a friendly little company there. Manulife, life and health insurance, ticker MFC, another Canadian company, yeah. raised their dividend 11%, 5.41% current yield. Last two, here we go, Coca-Cola. You may have heard of Coca-Cola, ticker K-O. They, they rue. We were going to say raised and grew at the same time, so you get rue. 4.5%, which is their 61st consecutive annual increase, 3.11%, or as we say here, 11, 3.11% current yield. And last but not least, Extra Space, ticker EXR. If you know, if the whole life storage thing goes through, I'm more than likely going to take my shares of public storage and convert those into Extra Space. Still looking it over, still thinking about it. Don't need to rush into anything right now. Uh, they raised their dividend 8%, which is their 13th straight year of dividend growth. They have 2,000 plus storage facilities across 41 states, and I've been seeing more of them around these parts where I drive around. 4.08% dividend yield. And those, ladies and germs, are the dividend news that we have for you. <laughs> I don't remember the song I sing. News you can use. Don't get the blues. It's dividend news. Yeah. Okay. Uno momento, por favor. Necesito un sip. De la agua, of the agua. All right, what have we been going here? Almost 13 minutes. So here's the thing, everybody. Everyone, what I did is I sold Brookfield Asset Management. The whole reason I sold Brookfield Asset Management. So it's interesting. They are like, they're, they manage, <laughs> you see me struggling. Brookfield is a, big web of companies from what I can tell and deduce. And I think Brookfield Asset Management is kind of going to manage those companies, if that makes sense. I may be explaining it wrong, but just in case. Now, I want to do a fun little thing. Here is the company from Yahoo. This is the Yahoo summary. And then I'll read you the one for the company I ended up buying. Tell me if you honestly think you can understand this business. And if you can, you know, great, because the reason we want to really understand a business is so we can make sure, not even just for free cash flow discounting, we want to know that they're going to be around five years and 10 years and not just around, but healthy and growing. And to do that, we need to understand them. So here we go. <clears throat> Clear the pipes. Brookfield Asset Management Limited provides alternative asset management services. Its renewable power and transition businesses business includes the ownership, operation, and development of hydroelectric, wind, solar, and energy transition power generating assets. The company's infrastructure business engages in the ownership, operation, and development of utilities, transport, midstream, data, and sustainable resource assets. In addition, its private equity business offers business, infrastructure, and industrial services, and real estate business, which includes core investments and transitional and development interests. Further, the company engages in the residential development business, including home building, condominium, and land development. Brookfield Asset Management was incorporated in 2022 and is headquartered way up there in the Great White North, Toronto, Canada. Check that out. So this is what I get from, from reading that as I skim over. Brookfield Asset Management 
is they manage renewable power and transition, okay? They also do infrastructure business, uh, which is developing utilities, <laughs> even uh, data, sustainable resource assets. Okay, so they also have, in addition to their um, renewables and to infrastructure businesses, they have private equity where <laughs> they're loaning out money. That's what that is. And then they also engage in residential development, including a real estate, which is building homes, condominiums, and even developing land. They're all over the place. You know, Godspeed, I bless him, my friend Jeremy from uh, uh, Dividend Stockpile. He really brought them to my attention. A lot of love they're getting on Twitter. Sounds really interesting, really nice, but quite honestly, I don't understand how to analyze and break down all those segments. Uh, with Johnson & Johnson, it's much easier, right? They have three segments. They have the medical devices. Okay, that's the stuff that doctors are using in hospitals and nurses use in hospitals. They have the pharmaceuticals. That's the drugs. That's your uh, Stellara, I think, is their number one. That's drugs that make people better. Got it. And then the one they're spinning off into Kenview is their consumer health products, which is your, you know, your Lysol, your Band-Aid, um, Avena. They have a bunch of different brands, though that is super easy to understand. So although they have three segments, I can understand them. But each one of these segments is just, you know, as Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger say, I think for them, this would go in the too hard pile. And they've mentioned that many times. And I know because I listen to all of their uh, all of their their annual meetings, except 2022. I haven't listened to that one. But since 1994, I listen to all three hours on every year. So they do say that there's one foot bars in the world in the game of investing it doesn't matter. You don't get extra points for something that's difficult that turned out right. They look for the easy button. They look for the one foot bars to step over instead of trying to run and pole vault over a seven or eight foot bar or whatever, however high they put them up. Not trying to do that. So I'm kind of taking that to heart and looking at businesses that I really can understand. Now, here we go. I'm going to read you because... Apparently, I'm still learning how to speak to the world in more water. Hey, you just flap your gums for 30 minutes straight and see how you do. And some people might say, I speak all day long, Russ. Well, hey, you got a guy here who's in, I'm, I'm in my pajama pants. I'm doing this in my pajama pants. I'm in my pajamas, my PJs, because I can. If you don't like it... Well, you can go to hell. <laughs> don't go to hell. I don't even know that it's there. Anyway, we won't get theological here, but this is what, this is what I did buy. I bought Algoma Steel, ticker A-S-T-L, and here is their description from Yahoo. See if you can understand this. I'll read it as it is, and I have one thing to add. Algoma Steel Group Incorporated produces and sells steel products primarily in North America. It provides flat slash sheet steel products, including temper rolling, cold rolled, hot rolled pickled, and oiled products. Also, floor plate and cut to length products for the automotive industry, hollow structural product manufacturers, and the light manufacturing and transportation industries and plate steel products that consist of rolled, hot rolled, and heat treated for use in the construction or manufacture of rail cars, buildings, bridges, off-highway equipment, storage tanks, ships, and military applications. Algoma Steel Group was founded in 1901 and is headquartered in Sault Ste. Marie, Canada. For those of you that are listening, that is spelled S-A-U-L-T, S-T-E, Marie. Marie, Canada. It's not Salt St. Marie. Don't say that. People from that region are liable to take a hockey stick and break it right over the back of your neck. Uh, Phil Esposito. The Espositos were from Sault St. Marie, or as they called it, the Sioux. But they make steel. <laughs> I can, in three words, I can sum up Algoma in three words. They make steel. 
products. Four. We'll go forward because it's just it's so. But the one thing I want to point out, because it caught my attention, was hot rolled pickled. And I had to look it up. And all that that means is the metal's been heated, rolled like flat like a pancake. And then it's pickled, quote unquote, in a special solution that removes the scale and rust. Because when you roll it like that, you heat it up, cools, it can get scale and rust on it. And then it's oil to protect it and make it easier to work with. So you got it. They make steel. Can I explain Brookfield Asset Management in four words? It doesn't mean it's not a good investment. Not at all. It may be the most phenomenal investment and I'm just flat out going to miss it. But I'm. this is part of my, my evolution. I'm not saying it's what you should do. This is just my evolution. I want to invest in businesses that I can easily understand. I can, as um, Peter Lynch says, uh, write it out, draw it with a crayon, explain it to a child or my grandma using a crayon. Can I do that with Algoma? Yes. Can I do that with Brookfield Asset Management? No, I had only bought three shares of Brookfield I slept on it, I gave it a weekend, and it was just in the back of my mind, and I was going to buy more, and I thought, but you know what, honestly, the conviction just isn't there, because I just can't wrap my head around the entire structure of their business. I can read it on paper, but it's so, to go into each one of those, it's just too hard for me. So, I had a little bit of fun here, real quickly, uh, I asked ChatGPT to explain to a child in one sentence Brookfield Asset Management versus Algoma. So Brookfield Asset Management in one sentence said, Brookfield Asset Management, ticker BAM stock, is a way for people to own a small piece of a big company that makes money by investing in different types of things like real estate, renewable energy, and infrastructure projects. Easy. I understand it, but when I delve into it, I, I don't understand it. And now Algoma Steel, ticker ASTL, is a big company that makes strong and durable metal that is used to build all kinds of things like cars, ships, and bridges. And I know we're, we're going to need steel. And I'm going to just tell you really quickly here about why I invested in Algoma. They just had their, their uh, earnings call. It was their... Oh, brother. I don't remember. Quite honestly, if it was the Q4, I believe it was their Q4. I don't remember if their fiscal year. I listen to a lot of earnings calls to uh, Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola. I just, just, I forget. I get mixed up if I don't write it down. So either way, I listen to their earnings call and I invest in Algoma because it's not where they've been, but it's where they are and where they're going. One thing Ben Franklin was fond of saying was he's not really focused on the past, like other than to learn lessons from it. He's focused on the future and where we're going because that's something we have control over. And the past, you have no control. There's zero. You can wish and hope all you want. You are not going to change the past. The only thing you can change is the future and that will affect or I'm saying you can you can change the present, which will affect the future. Because as I like to say, you can never really live in the future. You can only live in the present because five seconds from now, it's not going to be the present. Or no, ah, oh, for Christ, five seconds from now, it will be the present. It will not be the future. And five seconds from those five seconds will be the future. So. We can never be in the future and we can never be in the past. We can only be in this moment, which is what I like. Anyway, so I've, I like where they're going. Uh, CEO Michael Garcia and CFO Rajat Marwa, they went over talking about some of the issues and a lot of it is what we've seen all over. Demand uh, outstripped their production, production capacity, which is funny because they were talking about they were buying Coke. Sounded like I was listening to a bunch of Colombians for a minute with them buying Coke and getting text messages. They, they uh, Coke, if you don't know, Coke is in blast furnaces and it's, it's piece, I think it's almost, I don't know if I want to call it coal dust, but it's part of coal and it, it just hell it's like wood for a fire it just helps heat things up to melt the metal and then they can get the iron that separates out of the rock the iron ore again really easy stuff to understand it doesn't take a rocket scientist um, but they've been temporarily supplanting the coke with what they didn't they didn't have so 
Several areas were affected, but the higher input, that's areas of the business, but higher input costs that they've been paying are going to subside. Inventory is going to normalize. Uh, their EAF, which is an electric arc furnace, this is what really grabbed my attention as I was looking into them. They are shifting away from the blast furnaces, which are very sooty and dirty and use coal and carbon, and they're not green at all. They are the antithesis of being green, but the uh, EAF, their electric arc furnace, which uses electricity to melt. It's basically carbon. New, uh, it, you, the energy that's coming from the Toronto grid is largely carbon neutral, but the arc furnace uses 70% fewer uh, CO2 emissions or creates 70% fewer CO2 emissions than does the blast furnace. And they just laid those first beams and they're targeting a mid-2024 startup date, which is also in coinciding with their plate mill modernization, which again, a plate mill, they're making plates, kind of like, again, rolling them out like a pancake, heating up globs of metal, rolling them flat and wide. <clears throat> their only long-term debt is their government financing, which is attractive, and their full access to their credit is undrawn. Uh, so again, they're largely have no debt. They're transitioning, trying to become greener. They increase their, uh, they're looking to increase their future cash flow by doing this transitioning. They have 120 plus year history. And again, they're aiming to become a North American leader in low cost green steel, meaning that they're trying to produce steel with as few carbon emissions as possible, which is going to get them a higher ESG rating. Whether that's a fad ESG, we don't believe in it. It's here right now. It's the game that companies are playing. And I think it's good for the planet. And I just, I expect this company to grow with this transition. And I, I've, I've got 10 shares. Currently, they are about $8 a share. Um, again, just a business I can understand going forward. Um, I like to buy a share or two like I do that. Sleep on it, dig in more. Now, if you're watching on Spotify or YouTube, uh, you're going to see a little bit here of the old simply safe dividends. Dude, I had a lot to say in this episode, huh? The time just flew by. So they have a current dividend yield of 2.51%. Their share price, $7.97. Currently, again, Small cap company, $857 million market cap. They have lots of room to grow. So I have those 10 shares averaged $8.43 a share. And they currently are paying 20 cents a year per share, 5 cents per quarter. They just started paying that dividend. By the way, they were public. Then they were brought private by an Indian company. And then a few years ago, they were brought public by some U.S. investors and they threw us back. It was 2021, I believe they went through a SPAC, came public once again, and here we are. So they just started paying that dividend not too long ago. But dude, the free cash flow payout ratio is 19%. You know, that jumped up from 1%, again, because they've had a lot higher input costs that's affecting the bottom line. They're also modernizing, they're upgrading, they're building their electric arc furnace. It's going to set them apart, I think. And that free cash flow payout ratio, I say skyrocketed to 19%, which is nothing. But they did, in all honesty, have a sales growth spike to 112% in 2022. That's come down a little bit. Their shares outstanding slowly are growing. Now, when they SPAC, they were at about 71.8 million. They're at 158 million now. So they are trying to grow the business. So we're going to look, we're going to keep an eye on that. But the total sales, $3.04 billion on that. And what I really like is the high return on invested capital of 34%. And now their free cash flow margin is negative 19%, but it was at 30%. Again, a lot of factors that are messing around with, they're messing around with the free cash flow. So it's going to be down for a little bit. And I'm kind of hoping it pushes the share price down. I'm going to get to 100 shares of Algoma and I want to hold them for a good five years and see what happens with them. And again, not a huge commitment. 
but they are undervalued and I'll show you that in a minute. And they have no net debt currently, which is just fantastic. And an interest coverage ratio of 38.46. And when we come to alpha spread and look at the intrinsic value, they have a base case they give them of $27.33, making them about 71% undervalued. And for a worst case, five years of negative growth, they still have an intrinsic value of $21.31, so about 63% undervalued. How about how about them apples for a margin of safety? I love that, I like it. They have a really, really good solvency score, profitability, profitability? <laughs> profitability score. And I really do like what this company is doing, where they're going, and it's really nice to see that their total debt is $93.3 million. Their cash and cash equivalent, $465 million. They have no net debt. And I love when companies don't have a lot of debt. It's a business that's easy to understand. And I hope this was helpful for you. If, if this was, let me know in the comments below. Hit me up on Twitter, at RustyRam78. I'd love to know your thoughts. And... Yeah, it's not a sexy company. It's not going to be something that's blowing people's socks off, but that's okay. Investing doesn't have to be exciting. If it's boring, it's probably a good thing. And as far as I can tell, we're going to need steel. We're going to need steel for many years to come. And Algoma, hey, they may not be the biggest and the baddest, but... Dude, at, at less than a billion dollar market cap, they have plenty of room to run forward. So, hey, let me know what you think. Uh, if you haven't done so, please sign up for the newsletter. Every Sunday night, I'm putting it out, telling you what I've been buying, what I've been selling, trying to pare it down to give a quick thought at the beginning, and then some stocks that are going ex-dividend in the coming uh, week. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. We don't know why the guy sings. I don't care, because it's my show. And I do what I want. And if you have any ideas for the show and you want to let me know, let me know. Drop a line. Have at it. Join me on my live streams on Sunday on YouTube if you want to chat with me live and say what's up. And come back next week. And thank you for spending a little bit of your time and your life Letting me come in your ear holes like that. I do appreciate that. It feels so good. I will talk to you next week. So long, everybody.